Hi, my name is Joel Silverman. This is my dog, Foster. I'm a hollowed animal trainer, and I've had an awesome life. I'm not only going to show you how to train your dog, but also introduce you to some of the top dog trainers in the United States. Back up. Bow. Head down. Sit. Sit up. Recover. Good boy. That's how we do it, and you can too. I'm Joel Silverman, thanks for watching. You know, a couple months ago I got a chance to work with a breed of dog I'd never worked with before called a black mouthed cur. And his problem was he didn't come when called. And uh, I showed you a technique where we actually started off using a long training line, you know, on the dog. And uh, what was interesting was if you watch that episode, it was kind of funny because the distraction that we used was a neighbor's cat, which was in heat. It was kind of funny. But uh, we got a chance to return and check his progress. We're gonna do that in the next couple minutes. Before that, let's take a look at today's show. Today's cat training segment is geared towards kids guiding your cat with treats. In our working dog segment, agility dogs. But first up, canines of Orange County. In this previous episode, I helped Sarah train her dog Rue to come, and the way we did it was we took a long training line, attached it to the collar, and let the dog wander off. And we had the cat there as a you know, great distraction. And so when the dog came to the end of the line, we simply redirected the dog onto us. You know, when we say dog doesn't want to come to us, um, a lot of people think for some reason that it's you know, a dog being off a leash, and the dog is saying, well, I'm off a leash, I don't have to come to them. It's not really so much that as much as I believe that it's the dog understanding that he just doesn't have to come from three feet away, five feet away, 10 feet away, 15 feet away. He just doesn't have to. And so what I always like to use is a long training line, and that's what we're gonna use for this behavior. And um, it's a really, really cool way. And, I, and the, way, the way I like to do it is, in, in some training, uh, ideas in training, um, I like to incur, uh, incorporate a positives and negatives. And the negative basically is basically saying, hey, you're gonna you know, come, we're gonna correct, correct you, and you have to come to us, we're gonna reel you in with a long training line. Okay. At the same time, with a positive, we're also gonna give a treat, a lot of times. Um, but what I would love to try with this guy is, because he seems really, really into you and stuff, is not really using the positive, just basically saying, because down the road anyways, it really is down the road, because we're gonna fade out the treat anyways. Yeah. Um, so we started working with Rue. Okay, Sarah, so what we're gonna do is we are going to be using a long training line. This is one of my um, favorite things in training your dog to come, because, um, what I always like to do is to use this as a form of correction. Okay. And whether the dog is, again, five feet away, 15 feet away, 20 feet away, he just knows that um, he, he has to come to me, okay? And as you can see, he's, he's all excited about that cat over there. And it was just really, really good. And by the way, if you folks out there have um, a cat or something that the animal, you want to train your animal to come, you know, set yourself up in a situation like this because you always want to set yourself up. Give your animal the worst scenario, okay, the absolute worst scenario because if you can do that from the very beginning, that's going to be, that's going to help you incredibly. So we have a cat over there and what we want to do is I just want to kind of let the leash out just a little bit here, okay. Let's out. Roo, come, come. And what I'm doing is I'm actually reeling him in almost like a fish, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like that. He comes to me, reward him just like that. That's very, very nice. That's a good boy. Sometimes if the animal doesn't want to leave us or whatever, it's because the fact that they kind of are keen to the situation, kind of understand what's going on. So what I like to do is bring him away, kind of take him away from it for a second, kind of play with him a little bit. So watch okay. what happens. Ru, Ru, come here. That's a good boy. Come on. That's a good boy. Very, very good. Kind of take him away. Let him have a good time. Everything is cool. And we bring him right back again. We say, okay, great. Ready? Watch this. What is it? Rue, come, come, and that cat just bailed. Rue, come, and because that cat bailed, that cat, of course, the dog wanted to want. But again, just because with, with what we've been doing, the dog is like, okay, I kind of got what they want. I kind of understand what, see what they want. As Rue began to understand, I then handed him off to Sarah. But as she started working with him, you know, she wasn't correcting him firm enough. Rue, come here. Good boy. Okay, and what you want to do is what I would do. What I would do probably is is go. A little bit loud, Rue, come. come. So it's okay. like, boom, he's like, okay. And it's and I always tell people, too, it's funny because people always say, come. It's like, like question. question. Yeah, the, animal, the animal's like, no. It's like, Rue, come. Make it a statement. Not a question, but a statement. Okay. Rue, come. We love our dog. I love our dogs and everything, but it's, we have they have to come to us. It's, there's no negotiations, okay? okay? So the cat is teasing us again, so go ahead. And, okay. So let's go ahead. And, okay. Rue, come. Correction. Much better and real. Perfect. Good, good job. That was excellent. That was great. That was really, really good. One more good time. Boy. Let's just okay. do it one more time. So that was beautiful. One more time. Rue, come. 
Very nice. Good job. Very, very good. When we come back, we'll see how Rue did when we return a few months later. Okay, Sarah, so it's been a few months and mm -hmm. we are in a, we're in a dog park actually, no dogs here right now, tons of smells, horses in the background as well. So we've got like a ton of distractions here. Last time we had a cat in heat. That's right, right? yeah. <laughs> okay, so how, how did everything go? Pretty much, he comes when I call him, even if it might take a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, he's staying in the yard more, um, just overall doing better. Excellent, now you used, as far as the training goes, we, get, we, we showed you the long training line. Mm -hmm. That was uh, very, very important, I, I mm -hmm. hope. I hope you got a chance to use that. And uh, you used that, but you, there's something else you did. Uh, well. Treats were helpful. Uh -huh. um, how, how did you use those? What did you, what did you do with um, those? You know, kind of charge up the treat like in the house and mm -hmm. let him know that come actually means something that's pleasant. Uh -huh. um, and then going out on a hike or, or what have you and having him come and then giving him lots of treats. So you use a combination of, of using the long training line mm -hmm. of the correction with the with the treats with right. the, with the with the positive as well. Yeah. As as as, as well. Yeah. Well, uh, and again, Rue is a black mouthed cur. Yes. Black mouth cur. Yes. And I have never seen a black mouth cur before. Is this is this normal, by the way, the personality? Just because he's uh, pretty. He's he's very mellow. Uh -huh. um, for the cur, we have three others that are kind of crazy, mm -hmm. uh, and he would rather just sleep on the couch all day like a cat. So he's a little different, but once you get him out on a hike, he's like a greyhound. He'll go and go and go. So great. Well, we have, as I said, we've got a lot of lot of smells. We don't have a lot of dogs are here right now, but we've got a lot of smells. So let's uh, let's see how he does. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Um, well, we we haven't really been here before, so usually when I'm at a new place, I'll let him just kind of get his smelling out of the way, let the leash drag, let him know I have treats, and then down the road I'll let him kind of have a little bit more freedom. Gotcha, so, so let the leash, dra the leash drag in there, okay. Moving over to that camera, great. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Rue, come. Good boy. That's yeah, you don't care about the treats, do you? <laughs> but he came to you, but he came to you. That's Yeah, good job, thing. buddy. And then, um, so have him come to you again, let's call okay. him again. Rue? Come. Good boy. Can, can reward. That's great. That's a, and you know what's really nice is the fact that he's, um, I mean, the, the treats really aren't, you can obviously tell treats are not the main issue. Right. He still, he still understands he has to come to you. Right. That was, that was really, really nice. That was really, really good. Let's do it one more time. Okay. This time I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hold on to him. Okay. Give him a little bit more distance here. And then, um, good. And then uh, what I want you to do is going to let the leash drag a little bit here. Okay. And go and call him. Okay. Roo. That's really nice. I mean, Good I love boy. the fact that, I mean, he's a mellow dog, so obviously he's not a dog that is, you know, he's not going to go flying to you because right. that's just not his nature. So, Sarah, you have a lot of dogs. Mm -hmm. You have, what, five dogs? Yeah. And Rue is just one of many dogs, but Rue is a, a big part of your life, isn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, he's very sweet. He spends a lot of time in the house because he's so mellow, and we have cats, too. Um, he's just, uh, he started out as a foster that I never wanted to keep, and now I'm really glad that we kept him. Okay, we are with Christy Mealy and Gusto. What type of dog is Gusto? Gusto is a Bernese mountain dog. Mm -hmm. They are from Switzerland uh -huh. and originally farm dogs, pulling carts. Mm -hmm. um, he's a pet and a worker now. Now this guy, this is not a common dog as a movie animal for, you know, as training animals, movies and commercials, is it? No, they're not common because of their color. Dark is usually not called for, mm -hmm. but I guess lighting has gotten better and he has really actually been very popular. I got him when he was a puppy and he's worked quite a bit. And what and any challenges in working with a Bernese Mountain dog? Because you know it's a bigger dog. Does it get hotter or does he it does get... get hot easily? The interesting thing about Gusto is he's very energetic. Uh -huh. Most of them are kind of calm and quiet. He he has the energy of a golden retriever, believe it or not. Really? So it's kind of fun to try and chat, you know, sort of channel it into different things. He's pretty high action. Now I don't know. Uh, a lot of you folks have watched a lot of features, a lot of you know TV series and things like that. Christy has worked behind the scenes on many, many shows. Um, just a couple, couple big shows you worked on. Couple big shows. Uh, Full House, uh -huh. Comet, The Golden Retriever. Many years on that. Wonderful job for me. How, how many uh, years is that, by the way? Oh gosh, I think it was eight or nine. Okay. We had the dog on. 
and uh, closest thing I had to a nine to five job because mm -hmm. it was a television series. Feature wise, Common also did a movie called Fluke. Uh -huh. Then I did Men in Black one and two. Mm -hmm. Recently, Eight Below, uh -huh. Marmaduke. Wow. All kinds of shows. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of those shows. <coughs> Good. 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 kids watching a show, any tips for kids that, that are looking to get into the business? Not so, not so much being a movie animal trainer, but you know, just getting into working with animals. Well, you know, as a child I loved animals, of course, and um, what I did is I watched a lot of Disney shows and then I trained my dog. And hmm. I used to put on little shows for relatives. My dad would call me and, Christy, come in and show them how the dog plays dead. And I just taught I myself. <laughs> taught myself. So um, my tip for a child is train your dog and see if it, you know, if it's something you enjoy. And, um, you know, also these days there's all kinds of avenues, Moore Park College, uh. you know, out here in California, and um, different animal programs, vet techs. That's excellent. Well, Christy, thanks a lot for coming on. You're very welcome. <laughs>
is easier to work mm -hmm. than a dog you have to drag around a course. Mm -hmm. uh, prey drive, however, needs to be controlled. Uh, impulse control is really, really important. All too often, people mistake um, a high drive dog for a reactive dog. They are two separate, entirely different things. Good point, so, very, very yeah. good point. Lynn, thanks a lot for coming on, I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, it's fun. Catch you next time. Thank you. Okay, this week's cat training segment, guiding your cat with treats. And this is great for kids. It's a very, very basic thing. It's also great for if you work in a Humane Society animal shelter rescue group or a Humane Society just like this one. If you've got a treat and, and you can guide the cat with the treat and the, the cat will take the treat, there are a lot of things that you could do to follow that. Train your cat to sit, train your cat to lie down, things like that. And it just kind of motivates the cat. So kind of want to go into that right now with you. This is um, Tabitha and this is a female cat. Um, in cat colony number one here and um, just worked with her just for a couple days here but I want to kind of show you kind of how we work it. The first thing you do, just put the treat on the ground. That's the first thing you want to do. Just put the treat right down there. And the next thing you want to do is take the treat and just move the treat to another, a different area almost like where the cat's got to go down to that area right there, okay? And then we would kind of do something where maybe the cat's got to come back up here. He sees the treat up here, right back up here. Good. And he comes, jumps back up and you just put, put the treat down, okay? And you just do little little moves um, back this way and then move back down that way, okay? And then doing little things like going back down here. Kitty, kitty, right here. Okay. And you can see he kind of like finds a way to, to get down there, you know, he finds a way. And then when the cat is cool with that, right down here. Kitty, kitty, right here. Good. Right down. And then what you could also start doing is bringing the cat to another area like right over here. Kitty, kitty, right here. There you go. Right over here. We've always got a little cat that's always gonna, uh, you know, kind of take, try to take, take control here. <laughs> like, um, okay, right here, back up here, right here. Good, right back there. Good job. I know you're funny. How about you? Can you just like go over here? Go over the, here. Is that for you? Take that. You don't want that. You just want to. You just want to hog everything, huh? Okay, let's get this guy to come up. Come on. Good. Very, very nice. That's a good boy, as you can see. And what's kind of fun is that um, once the cat, oh, he. <laughs> See, he wants to take control here. If you can go like something like this, kitty, kitty, right over here. Oh, no, he's like, no way. Right over here, kitty, kitty, right here. Back up here. Good, very, very good. And as you can see, he just kind of jumps. And this is only working with this cat for just a few days. As you can see, the cat's taking the food. Really, really cool. One more time. Back up here. Right up here. Come here. I know. He's like, come here. Come right back here. I know. And forget about him. Okay. I'm, go right back up here. There you go. Right, kitty, kitty. There you go. Right back up. Good job. That's a good boy. But this is a great. This is a great thing to do. And if you if you if you've uh, if you're a kid and uh, you know somewhere 13 to 16 years old and you're working with you know your cat, and you want to start working with your cat. This is a great thing to start doing. Find the different treats that your cat likes. And the most important thing is just take the treat and just put the treat on the ground. That way you keep their hands away from the mouth and the feet. And because there's some cats that are a little bit little footy like you saw with this cat, with the other cat. And, uh, but he's really, really cool. Okay, ready to go? You want to try this one more time? You want to try walking? Do you want to go across here? Okay, over here. He's like, no way. How about up here? No, nope. how about this way? How about down here? How about down? Good. How about over here? Come here. Right here, up here. Kitty, kitty. That's a good boy. Very, very nice. That's a good cat. Excellent. Good job. This week we're going to teach you the out behavior, but teaching the dog to pick the object up, bring it over, and place it in the object here. In one of our previous shows, we actually showed you the out behavior, but we pretty much stayed right here in this one spot. And now we're gonna start creating a little bit of distance, okay? So what we wanna do is, if you haven't seen this before, is we're gonna place the object in the dog's mouth, say the word out, the dog is gonna place the object in here. But watch what happens. Out. I'm gonna take a treat and place the treat inside there. This way, this it makes the area he's putting the object in very, very reinforcing. So one more time, sit. Hold it out. Great. 
and, and, and again, he's placing it. He's not necessarily dropping it. He's placing it in there. When your dog is consistent with that, now what you can start doing is you can start tossing it a little bit, just like over here. Pick it up, hold it out, just like that. Not very far, it's only about maybe a foot, okay? And now we start going a little bit farther once the dog understands that. Go pick it up. Good. Out. Good boy, very nice. That's a good boy, Foster. That was about five feet right there. One more time. Go ahead, go pick it up. That's about eight feet. Good. Out. Very, very nice. When you're training behaviors like this with food, and there's a lot of motivation involved, you can see the tail, you can see the attitude. Watch Foster explode when I throw the object. And what's, what's kind of fun too is when you're throwing the object, kind of hold the dog a little bit. Hold, ready, go pick it up. Leaps. <laughs> Out. Very, very nice, that's good. And that is the out behavior from a distance. Well, that is our show today. And remember when you're training your dog to come, Always start off by using a long training line. Very, very important. I want to thank all of our guests for coming on today. Most importantly, I want to thank you for watching. I'm Joel Silverman, reminding you to bond with your heart, train with your brain. See you next time.